Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there's Tucker. <laughs> That's me. And we are in the Gearheads three row SUV. As Dodge claims, it is still the quickest three row standard SUV on the market. There are a lot of qualifiers there on that one. We are in, of course, the 2023 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat with 710 horsepower and launch mode that I really want you to test at some point while we've got this. Tell me this though, why does a regular person need this powerful of an engine? They don't. <laughs> and in this video, we're gonna tell you how this old school three row crossover fits our family of three. Stay tuned. We are in, perhaps, I, I struggle with some of the EVs that we've had, but we are in perhaps the most powerful gas-powered vehicle that you have ever tested mm -hmm. on this channel. I know we had the Ram 1500 TRX. It has eight less horsepower than this one. This mm. one is also smaller and lighter than that TRX. You've already accidentally I'll give you that one. Goosed it a few times. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are your thoughts so far with this Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat? She's big. <laughs> <laughs> but not as big as the Ram, right? Not as big as the Ram. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... And it surprisingly doesn't feel as big as I thought it was okay. going to. Okay. Um, it's, it's still big. Yep. But... It doesn't feel like driving a refrigerator. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I would Maybe say, a small refrigerator. Okay. <laughs> I would say this is, has more in common size-wise with the Ford Explorer that is up in front of us than like a Chevy Tahoe that you always kind of bring big oh, yeah. three-row vehicles back to. Why don't we start with the styling outside, then we'll move inside as per usual, and then we'll talk about the beast that lies under that striped mm -hmm. hood. What are your thoughts on the exterior designs of this Dodge? Um, I would say it's just kind of normal yeah. styling. Um, there's a couple of things like the bump on the hood that gives you that Power bulge that lets you know that there's something more to this car. But as far as like past the hood, it's kind of just your regular SUV kind of styling. Funny thing is, you said that about the last Dodge that we had here. That one was a little more ho-hum. It only had four cylinders <laughs> under the hood. No crazy supercharger or anything. But yeah, just kind of, eh, no, uh, safe. Yeah, safe. There you go. Safe styling. Um, what do you think about racing stripes? This is the first vehicle we've yeah. had with racing stripes. But racing stripes... On a three-row family SUV. I like it. Okay. Uh, do some people not like it? I, I mean... Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, so... It's a little pretentious. <laughs> okay, maybe because it's a three-row SUV, but it does have a big engine. Yeah, give it a little. Know? Just, just a little. So, a little, a little I think it, uh, I think it... It, it backs warrants, it up. Yes, it okay. warrants... Uh, a little bit more sportiness to it, I okay. think. Nope. You don't <laughs> think so, Tucker? Nope. He's out on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> moving from the outside, that is kind of safe. What are your thoughts moving to the inside that has taken some chances? Yeah, I like the inside a whole lot. Yeah. Um, it's... I like the red accent color. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like maroonish reddish, mm -hmm. um, but it's a classy color. It's not in even, your face. Even the seat belts. Hooker red or anything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. It's classy. Yes. But, but then you also have some different textures like that. Do you know what this is? No. Titanium? No. No. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, that's right. And this is a very unique carbon fiber. It's not the normal weave that you mm -hmm. typically see. It's what they call impacted carbon fiber. We've got it here on the doors as well. No two vehicles have the Interactive. same. Yeah. No two vehicles okay. have the same impacted carbon fiber oh, design. That's interesting. I like so it. all just a little unique and different as you go about. I like that there's not a ton of this black mm. where you're gonna get Lost black plastic. Dust. Yeah, you're gonna get dust. Just around a few a of the bezels. Bit. 
Uh, otherwise, the switch gear in here feels very familiar to us. We drive daily a 2014 mm -hmm. Jeep Cherokee, and while they are different, it feels very similar. Like the window switches are the same. This this entire section here on the door is in your car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and probably the yeah. same over on yours. I, I do like, we have heated and ventilated front seats up here. Physical right. buttons. Yeah. Your like car that. doesn't have that. And I wish and it And the, the heated steering wheel yep. has a physical button, which I like. Yeah. Easy access. Yep. And the Uconnect system, uh, if, if you've been in anything with the Uconnect 5 system, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, then we've got some buttons down here. Again, that launch control that I desperately want you to uh, attempt to use at some point while we have it. I think that would just make excellent content uh, for us. But uh, what about the steering wheel over there? I like the steering wheel. It's mm -hmm. He is very opinionated it? back there today. Why do you hate it? Because it's black. Uh, oh, it's black. You wish it was red? <laughs> He's sticking his tongue out at me. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I like the steering wheel. It's nice and thick, and then it's got the perforated sides mm -hmm. um, for gripping. Like big grips down there, yeah, big too. big grips. My goodness. Big grips. And then all the buttons, again. It's a steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. All the buttons are ripped straight out of your Jeep. Mm -hmm. Like, very familiar there. Yeah. Gauge cluster, though. Thoughts back there. Uh, why am I looking at RPMs in the middle? <laughs> like, how do again, I switch that? The same way, same reason that you have racing stripes on it. No head-up display in this one. Which no. is a little bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for us, but good steering. It wheel. looks like, I mean, the gauge cluster is small, kind of like a sports car. Okay. Would be yeah. to me. And then thoughts on storage up here before we move back further behind us. We've got much like your Jeep, dual mm -hmm. level storage here, very yeah. deep center storage down here. But I, I really like the dual. Yeah. level and, the, and this is it, felt line yeah it's felt lined so you won't have something rattling around in there i like that your two cup holders cup holder. uh, do have little rubber grippers but even your mini can uh does not stay in place in here but mm -hmm. it's not rattling around so that's no problem that's a place for your key chi wireless charger sure, yeah usb and, ports yeah uh, you have a little space right here mm -hmm. that's got a um, a mat at yep. the bottom, so you won't have anything rattling around right there either. And we have a damp and very felt-lined glove box over here that is of moderate size. Uh -huh. Interesting, I have a uh, cigarette-style power outlet hidden right here next to the opening. What are your thoughts on this like uh, very race car-inspired gear selector? You like it? Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, the, yeah. And the seats. What are your thoughts on the seats? The seats are comfortable. I like the seats. I will say that the um, lumbar support mm -hmm. is very straight edge. Okay. <laughs> it's like... There it is. Yeah, here it is. I too have lumbar so, over here, which yeah. is a luxury not always afforded to the passenger. Yeah, and there is um, two-person memory, right? Yes. Where is that? In front of the door handle. Oh, okay. I see it now. Generally good space in here, which I yeah, guess... Yeah, the seats are comfy. ...is now a good spot to segue to putting Tucker's child safety seat in and talking about that third row. I'm going to start this rear seat, car seat install review just a little bit differently than I normally do because we do have three rows of seats, but I'm going to go ahead and call out here. Uh, the second row captain's chairs are not child seat friendly. In fact, to get to the third row of seats, you have to tilt and tumble them forward. And peeking in to the back seats here, they are a 50-50 split two-person back seat. But as you can see down here, there are no lower latches on either of these seats. So if you do want to install a child safety seat back here, it is going to be using the seat belt. I'll show you here in just a moment. There are top tether attachment points on both spots back in the back. Uh, behind these seats. But a really nice option that I do like here is we have ceiling mounted AC vents. You can see we've got that for the second and third rows. Why don't we go ahead and come around back to the cargo compartment while we're back here. It is a power opening hatch that is a little on the slow side but opens up to give you a nice uh, 
wide opening to the rear cargo section back here. Not a lot of space back here with the third row of seats up, but these seats do fold down very easily uh, with a couple of latches. And as you can see, there are your top tether points for both of those. Now we've got tons of space back here. And I really do believe this is how most Durango owners are gonna be driving uh, in their vehicles with the rear seats folded down. You do get some additional space quite a bit of additional space underneath the false load floor here. So that is a nice touch. And with many Stellantis products, the hatch close button is right here, not on the hatch itself. I will go ahead and show you. Uh, it is a little low for me. I'm 5'10", and I feel like I have to duck to get underneath it. And that is as wide as it opens, but the button is right here. You get a couple beeps letting you know, get out of the way, I'm coming down, and then it does just that. Now let's move inside and get that child seat installed, Tucker. Yes, yeah, so things we really like back here, the ceiling mounted vents and a full center console with dual level opening uh, functions, just like the front console, which is a nice touch, especially for us coming from a 2014 Jeep Cherokee, where we get that dual level function right here. Two cup holders here, a little bit of storage, AC vents on the back of the front console as well, and heated outboard seats, though Tucker won't get to use those, and USB-A only uh, power ports back here, but we do have a household style plug uh, back here, three prong, 115 volt, 150 watt plug back here. But let's see how Tucker's child seat fits back here. We've already got it in its rear facing format, and yeah, wouldn't you know, I'd say fits pretty snugly in just like that. Coming around from his rear facing car seat to the front seat, let's see just how much space I've got up here for me again at 510. Oh yeah, plenty comfortable up here. My knees aren't in the dash. Uh, I'm not uncomfortably positioned anywhere in the vehicle. I'd say this is a huge win for what is a big three row family hauler, though a little bit dated. Now let's go back turn that child seat around, see what it's like installing it the way Tucker's been writing this entire video. Okay, so not bad all the way around. You would expect that from a big family three row, right? We'll go ahead and turn this uh, seat around. Make sure I've got it in the locked position. Go ahead and uh, let's see, do these headrests lift up? No, Ooh, that's gonna be fun jamming this through back there. Let's see. If we can get that in, okay. Latch goes through and there we go. So not too bad. These do have lower latch points uh, down here. They aren't covered up with anything or marked uh, on the seat backs, but they're very easy to find and fairly easy to get to. Uh, and with these dark red seats, the black latches are fairly easy to find with the high contrast uh, between them. So can get that tightened down very easily. These are reclining seats, so need to match the pitch of your child seat uh, just right and really tighten this down. Now, uh, let's see about getting that top tether in because as I showed you earlier, uh, these are tilt and tumble seats, they do not slide. So trying to attach this top tether, I guess I could do it from the side over here, let's see. Can I do it? Because the other option is climbing over top of those folded third row seats, which is not ideal, but I'm like going at it completely blind back here. Let's see, not my favorite so far. Can it be done? There we go. And okay. So I might need to uh, get a little work in, but yeah, okay. No, good, secure, snug. Not as terrible as I thought it would be. And uh, unlike these front seats that seem really big and bolstered out here, uh, the backs of these seats are rather flat. And so you're not gonna be doing any long-term damage uh, to the leather with this top tether. All the way around, I'd give it a solid B, simply because now this seat is locked in place. You can't move it. You're gonna have to use that seat to get into the back and all that fun stuff. And the fact that there are no lower tethers in that third row. All the way around though, that's all it'd be. 
moderately good space in here uh, for all three rows. Tucker can fit both rearward facing and forward facing and not crowd me up here. Mm -hmm. So that's generally fairly nice. Now it is uh, wobbly head time, I do believe. Yes. As we get ready to turn you on the believe. historic brick streets of downtown. What if I said Tyler, no? Then are you blazing full speed ahead? What, what, <laughs> what's the plan here? But yes, turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. See exactly what this is like on Not even pavement. gonna slow down. Tucker, what are your thoughts back there? It's a, uh, it's a little bumpy. Yeah, yeah. So we bit bumpy. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't so bad. So much like the racing stripes and the big techometer, mm -hmm. sport tune suspension. Yes. And uh, full-time all-wheel drive in this one. But yeah, sport tune suspension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel it here. Like it is a bigger vehicle, so the weight of it kind of smooths it out. But yeah, it's still... Still a little, a little bumpy. The head is a wobbly. <laughs> Which brings us to uh, your, I guess we'll do visibility and then we'll get into driving dyna dynamics. What's visibility like for you? I don't, I'm not loving the visibility. Okay. Um, it is long because it's three rows, so there's that, but the rear view mirror and the window out the back seem really small yeah smaller um and then if you had those Head the headrest in the back row flipped up it would be even less and then because it is three row you've kind of got some chunks right there the c pillars the c -pillars. yeah a bit chunky a bit chunky um and then with tucker's seat in the headrest right there it's kind of hard to see that back window so Eh. And then, and then we did mention that the backup cameras are not the best. They're not the clearest. They no. they're okay. So this, they get the job done. You can see this. This platform but. is old. Uh, this is perhaps one of the last years of this platform. Uh, the future is still uncertain. What the Durango will look like in years ahead, um, but. Yeah, she's showing her age. I'll, yeah. We'll say that. Um, this rides on a shared platform with the last generation Grand Cherokee. So, like, it, it's all alone now on this old platform. Yeah. But uh, now would be a good time. What's it like driving it? It's pretty fun driving it. It is a little bit like driving a beast. Yeah. Um, You're taming that beast. <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, it has some get up and go. <laughs> That's an understatement of the century. Yes. Uh, the turning is a little more of a chore than heavy steering. Yeah, a little bit heavy steering. Not, I don't know no. how to explain it. Kind of mid mid range. Yeah. On a yeah. scale of one to ten, with ten being the heaviest we've driven, it's probably a seven. Okay. So definitely a firmer suspension. Again, sport tuned, everything in here, sport tuned. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been at opportunities where this was available to go on a racetrack, which is not something you normally say with big three row family haulers. Right. But, uh, and how did it drive on the racetrack? I did not actually get to drive it on the racetrack. Oh. I had other more pressing videos to create, so. Like I said, I was there with the opportunity to drive it on a racetrack. But you didn't. But unfortunately. Missed opportunity. Yes, yes. Um, any other thoughts before I pull out the window sticker and talk fuel economy and price? Nope. Nope. Not for me. Tucker, any more thoughts from you? Any more thoughts from you, Tucker? Nope. She is thirsty. I'm not surprised. We have that big, uh, a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 under the hood with that loud supercharger. The supercharger on this is bigger than the engine in my daily driver. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> EPA estimates. 12 city. E. 17 highway. E. 13 combined. Yikes. You and I have not put enough miles on this to say it with any certainty uh, whether or not those numbers will be hit. But I can tell you the way I will be driving this. 
we won't. We will not be hitting those numbers. Um, yes. So what would be this, this guy's closest competitor? That is an interesting one. Uh, more than likely, it would be an electric vehicle, uh, a Rivian R1S or a uh, Mercedes. I know that sounds really weird. You think someone who's shopping for an EV would, might also be shopping for this? If they are shopping an EV for its straight line acceleration fun factor, yes. Um, a Tesla Model X possibly as well. Um, but there really aren't that many direct gas competitors to this. Hmm. So good question. Thanks. Care to guess? what the window sticker is. I will say in 2021, they were announcing this platform with this engine as a one year only special, get it while you can. Mm -hmm. And then two years later for 2023, they brought us this, uh, which made yeah. a lot of people mad that got the 2023s. Uh, the Jeep of the timeline, uh, same time also got this engine. Uh, so is it so popular that they mm -hmm. brought it back? That's what yeah. they brought it back. Yep. Okay, and so the people who thought they were getting a special edition ended up not not because, having a special yeah. edition. So all that maybe muddying the waters a little bit. What do you think? <laughs> what the sticker up this one is? I'm gonna go with seventy eight. <laughs> oh, way too low. Eighty seven. <laughs> Ooh, higher than that. You haven't even gotten to the base price. Uh-uh. <laughs> really? Ooh. Ooh, boy. 95? <laughs> Higher than that? Yeah. Is this a six-figure car? Yeah. What? It is. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Because of the engine? <laughs> 67? Ooh. More than that, team man Oh, boy. And no head-up display? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one hundred and six thousand dollars, and one hundred and six thousand four hundred twenty dollars. As this one is equipped, oh it boy. starts at ninety one seven forty. There is a ten thousand dollar option package on this one, so yeah, give it, give it, give it, so... go, go, go. I mean. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is worth six figures. Uh, okay. It, that's a hard this, sell for even. Tell me this though. Why does a regular person need this powerful of an engine? They don't. <laughs> they don't. It's just to brag about it. And, and for giggles and smiles and yeah. That's an expensive giggle. <laughs> yes, it is. And I am getting the sense that it will be a giggle that we only experience for the week that we have the tester, <laughs> yeah. and we will not be pursuing the purchase. <laughs> not for our family. <laughs> on that note, you can go see some behind the scenes stuff with Holly on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk. Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, you name it, at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to GTGarageTalk.com. But as for us, in the most powerful uh, vehicle I believe Holly has ever driven, definitely the most powerful you gas version, you don't version me. of anything. <laughs> On that note, until next time, Gearheads, bye. Give it some more. Go! Is everybody ready? I'm ready. I'm not late. Okay, I'm ready. Hear that banshee whine. That's <laughs> the sound it makes. Turn on the street and give it a little to see if I'm making it up. I am not saying that you are. Tucker, are Whatever. We, are we going to peer pressure mommy into... Oh! <laughs> I don't think yeah. we need to peer pressure. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep. Say, Mama, I'm going fast. I was born ready. Oh. <laughs> and on that note... Oh, it's fun.
Oh. <laughs> it's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs>